Hello, welcome to Alfred Basic Adult Piano Course Lesson Book Level 1. This is Lesson 1, which is going to cover pages 4 and 5 in your book. And we're going to start with page 4, How to Sit at the Piano. So if you look at the diagram, sit tall. And this is sound advice even if you're away from the piano. Slouching is just never good. If you slouch too much, whether you're at the piano or another chair, it could lead to back issues later in life. Um, pianists do a lot of sitting on the piano bench, so sit tall to avoid those back problems and pain later in life. But sitting tall also improves our ability to play, whereas if we're slouched, um, we're just not going to have the uh, ability to maneuver around the keyboard quite as much. Lean slightly forward. That will come natural as you're reading uh, the piano music. Let arms hang loosely from shoulders. Um, so be relaxed, uh, be comfortable. You don't want to be uptight. Again, tightness um, restricts movement. Elbows slightly higher than the keys. Uh, make sure your elbows aren't too, uh, too close to the keyboard. Um, you certainly don't want to be too close to the keys. That restricts movement. You don't want to be too far away. So make sure your elbows are also by your side. Knees slightly under the keyboard. Um, again, if your knees are out from under the keyboard, you're sitting too far back. Um, and if they're touching uh, the underside of the piano, you're probably too far forward. So keep your feet flat on the floor and close to the foot pedals. Maybe your left foot is on the left side of the pedals, your right foot's on the right side. And eventually, our feet will be using these pedals later on in the book. Let's jump over to page five. At the top, finger numbers. This is really important. Because in music, a lot of times written above or below the notes, you may see a number. And that number is often a suggestion. What is the best finger in your right hand or left hand to play that note? So before going any further in this book, you're going to want to memorize these finger numbers. Um, a common mistake is uh, people will think this finger, our pointer fingers, are one. Because um, a lot of times when we count, we go one, two, three, four, five. So forget that in music. Your thumbs are one. Your thumbs in both hands are always going to be one. So when you see a one above a note, that means you're going to use your thumb either in the right hand or the left hand. If you see two associated with the note, it's going to be your pointer finger either in the right hand or left hand. The three is your middle finger. Four is the ring finger. And lastly, five are your pinky fingers. So it might be a really good idea to test yourself. Call out a number, one through five, and wiggle those fingers. So for example, wiggle the fours, wiggle the twos, maybe right hand five, left hand three, right hand one, both hands two, you could mix it up, say left hand three, right hand two, if you really want to challenge yourself. So like I said, these need to be memorized because you don't want to be reading notes and seeing these numbers and saying, now what finger was associated with that number? So this needs to be memorized and it should be automatic. In the middle of page five, piano tones. So when you play a key, on the keyboard, it could be a white key or a black key, a hammer inside your piano touches a string to make a tone. When you drop into a key with little weight like this, you get a soft tone. When you use more weight like this, you get a louder tone. Now some keyboards do not have what is called uh, touch sensitive keys. Uh, an acoustic piano such as this one does. Uh, touch sensitive meaning 
uh, if I barely touch it, I get a soft tone. Hit it harder, I get a loud tone. Your keyboard um, may not have that. Um, a lot of keyboards will though, and all pianos do. So if you're on a keyboard that doesn't have touch sensitivity, then um, everything you play will be the same volume. You won't have soft, you won't have loud. So just keep that in mind. You can still obviously make great music. It will just all be the same volume. Um, so for those of us that have um, a keyboard that's uh, able to do that, or of course, uh, acoustic piano, experiment uh, hitting different keys, white keys or black keys. So again, just a little bit of weight creates a soft sound. But a lot of weight creates a louder sound. Now in the pink rectangular box, you see a diagram there, a hand holding what looks like a bubble. It says here, curve your fingers when you play. So when you approach the keyboard, before you play your first note, you need to approach the keyboard like your hands are holding a bubble. Why? Because if I could play the keyboard with curved fingers like so, I am in control of the keys and I have a lot of agility and maneuverability. Watch as I play the scale in my right hand. My fingertips are in control of the keys and my thumb was able to easily move under and my third finger crossing over. If I'm playing with flat fingers like so, watch my left hand now. The sound isn't as nice, I couldn't maneuver. If I play with my hand up too high, in fact, I'll demonstrate with both hands, I'm not in control. Curved fingers are the best way. You'll be in control, your fingertips are active, your thumb or other fingers are able to cross under and over easily. Why a bubble? Well, so you relax. If you're too tense, you're too tight. Your playing can get really rigid. Now I hit all the wrong notes, but it wasn't as musical. So relaxation is part of playing the piano. It's tough because we're trying to be precise when we're learning exact notes. But if you can learn to be relaxed early on, uh, there'll be huge benefits. So always approach the piano with curved fingers in both hands, like you're holding a bubble. So lastly, at the bottom of page five, number one says, play any white key with the third finger of either hand softly. So uh, notice my third finger there, which is my middle finger in my right hand, softly. My left hand, maybe I do hands together. Third fingers though, third fingers. So just getting used to playing quietly. Um, see how many times you can repeat the same key, making each tone a little louder. So watch my right hand here, third finger again, I'm gonna start soft, just a little bit of weight. A little bit louder now. Notice I had to bring my hand up and, and drop it down more. In time, your fingers will develop where You don't have to lift your hand as much, but in the beginning, it's okay if you drop that hand down. Uh, so experiment again, using a third finger on either right hand, left hand, white keys, black keys, experiment with just how a little bit of a touch makes a soft sound. If you want a loud sound, bigger touch. And now it says at the bottom, for the first pieces in this book, play with a moderately loud tone. So average volume, you're not going to be too soft, you're not going to be too loud, just average volume. So that covers pages four and five, lesson one. And um, so remember on page five to memorize your finger numbers and also curve your fingers when you approach the piano before you play. And uh, take some time to experiment between soft and loud tones on the keyboard. And I look forward to seeing you in lesson two.